a bit of a longer video uh, here, but uh, definitely worth it. So we completed successfully building our boot image, right? And, um, and now we want to see how can we modify the kernel that we're building. It's nice that we built it. That's great. But let's do something bigger and better with it. And a really common thing to do is add governors. Now, of course, uh, I've written several uh, guides for this on XDA. Um, you can also check out my um, website, um, thealaskalinuxuser.com or thealaskalinuxuser.wordpress.com. Or you can take a look at my GitHub if you want to look at some examples of kernel modification. So we're searching for the JF of course, for the um, kernel for the Samsung Galaxy S4. Um, but you could search really anywhere, whatever kernel you're working on. Uh, if you take a look, you probably find somebody else that's already been working on it and doing some other other work there. So we're gonna open up uh, just the kernel that I've modified before. And we can look at the commit history. And as we go through here, we see um, examples of where I've done some kernel modifications. And then you see examples of some other people's modifications or work that they've done. So uh, if you're looking for information on how to modify something in a kernel, look it up on GitHub or GitLab. You'll probably find where somebody has made some changes. So if we click on this um, overclocked and amped commit, we see all the changes that were made to add these governors. And the Lionheart is a really neat uh, governor that I particularly like. And so we're going to look at how we can add the Lionheart governor to our um, S4 kernel. Uh, if you're wondering where to get some governors, you could, of course, look uh, on my uh, repository. I do have this folder called Kernel Tweaks. Uh, it was made by another man, Eliminator. Uh, 74, and I definitely want to give credit to him where he uh, gathered all of these IO schedulers and governors together, but uh, but it's available either through my through my repositories or through his, or you can just look for them online uh, using uh, web search. Um, if you want to learn more about Governors, uh, a really interesting article, Android Governors Explained. Uh, there's several guides on XDA. There's several guides uh, on, on different places here. But uh, one that I've found particularly uh, useful here um, is just, just this uh, different definitions here. Here's the one that I'm I'm looking for here on XDA, but you can see, you can scroll through and look at the different uh, um, governors that are available. And this does not by any means list all of them, just a lot of the common ones. And it talks about each governor and how they work and what their um, goals or purposes are. And so uh, be sure to check that out. Here we have the Lionheart, what we're gonna install, you know, conservative based governor, which is uh, based on, um, Samsung's S8 3 source. Uh, the governor behaves more like the performance one at the cost of battery as the scaling is very aggressive. So um, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice um, one to use, governor to use if you want uh, to utilize things like video games on your on your phone or whatnot need something a little bit aggressive, Lionheart is the one for the job. There's plenty of other good ones out there and uh, people will debate until the cows come home on which one's the best. So when you find one you like, uh, you can go you know, online or to my repositories or eliminators or anyone's really, and you can uh, download um, the, uh, the source code to build that governor. And here we just see a lot of this code here written in C and it's um, may or may not make sense to you depending on what you are used to. But you can click raw and then just copy and paste all that into MP file or you can right click on raw and say download. Um, <clears throat> you could download the whole repository and work with that. Uh, just a couple different ways that you can get these um, governors. 
Uh, as it turns out, I've already installed this before, so we're just going to be able to move it right over. But I want to look at the process that we go through for installing a governor. And I wanted you to be aware of how you could get governors um, off the web in general. Um, so there's several things that have to happen when you're installing a new governor. You need to um, physically install it, but you also need to update in the driver CPU frequency folder things uh, like the kconfig so you can choose to actually use it. So if we open this up with Diffuse, a really useful tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a side-by-side -side comparison of the stock CyanogenMod um, kernel files and my custom edited files so we can look at the differences and talk about them. Uh, take me a second to find it here, kernel Samsung. Config. Okay, so this folder is telling all the options available for CPU frequency um, choices. So obviously that's what a governor does, is it governs what the CPU frequency is. And uh, Diffuse is really nice because you can have two files side by side and see where all the differences are. And so we are going to um, utilize this file. So here we have like the CPU frequency is just allows CPU frequency scaling. If you didn't allow CPU frequency scaling, then it would just stay at 100% all the time, um, which works really great if you have a powerhouse computer on a desktop, but doesn't work very good um, on your cell phone because you'd just be burning up batteries for nothing, even while your phone is asleep. Um, frequency tables, frequency statistics, all that sort of thing. These are all options that are in um, your uh, config file of whether or not you want to say yes or is not set or module for these sort of things. So of course we have several default uh, options that are already installed with every kernel. But what we want to add is the Lionheart. So this Notice that we're going to add it twice here. In this CPU frequency default gov Lionheart, it's giving us the option, do we want to be able to choose the Lionheart governor as the default governor when the phone starts up? So this is not actually adding the choice to have the Lionheart governor, but this is just saying, do we want to choose this as the default governor when the phone starts up? Um, I don't recommend setting the new governor you're installing to the default because you should uh, make sure everything boots up properly normally and then then turn on your governor that you just installed and see if that works. Now we're going to scroll down here and this is where we're going to add the option to actually choose to install the Lionheart governor itself. Now if you uh, take some time to look these over you can see um, the verbiage and how that works if you're not familiar with uh, config files. So here we're actually giving it the option to install the Lionheart governor. If you're saying, hey, configuration file says yes, then we need to go and build this Lionheart governor. Um, notice that we haven't actually installed the Lionheart governor. We're just saying we now have given you the option to choose to build it and to choose whether or not it's the default. So. Um, let's see, anything else we need over here? Nope. So we're going to save that. And notice we're saving that uh, kconfig. And uh, we're now going to open the make file. So just like we looked at in the last video, the kconfig is giving you the options, and then the make file is the one that actually is going to build whatever it is that you've chosen to make. So that anything that you chose to actually build, we're now going to make it. So we open the make file on both sides. Uh, on the left, of course, we have the um, stock kernel, and on the right, we have my modified kernel. So the great thing about governor is governor adding is really easy. Uh, we see we can just 
grab this one line and it says, hey, if you said yes to the option to build this uh, CPU frequency gov performance, for instance, then it says make that object by compiling that C file. So uh, if we open up in here, And can we see, you know, CPU frequency gov on demand? If you're saying yes, I want to build that, then the make file says, hmm, there's that on demand. Yep. So to make that on demand, it needs to build that CPU frequency on demand object. And we're just doing the same thing to the Lionheart. We're just adding a line that says, hey, if they said yes, I want to build that Lionheart, then uh, go ahead and make the object for the Lionheart. And the name of this object is just the name of the file, except for it's the C file, but we're saying we want the object from it. So we go ahead and save that. Um, so now we have our choice to actually build it. And we're saying, if you chose to build it, we've got a make file that tells us how to build it. But one thing that we're missing is the C file itself to actually build. Sorry, I had to step away for just a minute. But so if we go to our AKLU um, file, or folder rather, uh, you can see I've already um, made this, uh, added this governor before. And we look at the uh, original stock file and we see all these CPU frequencies and um, user space and whatnot. Um, and we just literally, we're going to get that Lionheart file. We're gonna copy it and we are going to paste it into um, our stock kernel. So now we have the file that we're actually gonna build. We have a make file that tells us how to build it. Um, here's the, here's, as we look at the code here, what that make file is going to go through and the compiler is going to, um, do all of these functions, put all this together and turn it into an object file that, uh, gets used. And then we have a kconfig file that tells us, yeah, we wanted to build that. Let's go ahead and, and choose yes or no. Do you want to build that? But what we also need to change is our default config. In our config here, we actually need to say yes or no, we want to build that. Because if we don't specify, then it is not set and it Lionheart will not actually get built. So let's open up from our arch arm config. And here we have the AKLU config. And let's open up the, um, in the CyanogenMod mod um, stock kernel, our science mod JS config. And of course we can see a couple differences here, but in particular, we'll search for Lionheart. And here we see uh, down in the CPU frequency scaling section, which is where we would hope to find it. Uh, notice that Choosing the governor of Lionheart is not set. So we want to say that is not set, or essentially we're saying no, we don't want it to be the default governor. And uh, then you have this section below where you're actually adding the governors themselves. <clears throat> so notice that uh, you know, each one of these governors has a uh, yes or is not set. And then some of these governors actually have a lot of options, but we're just going to move over this CPU frequency governor Lionheart and say, yes, yes, we want to build that. Yes, we want to add that um, to our kernel. So we saved that file. So now we've, we've got the file we're going to build. We've got the make file that tells us how to build it. We've got the K config that gives us the choice to build it. And we've edited our configuration to say, yes, we want to build it. So this is good news because it looks like we're ready to build. Um, something to um, 
Well, let me get this build started here and then we can chat while it's building. But uh, something to think about, you may, may or may not want to run what's called make clean and empty out your out directory if you're making some significant changes like at the kernel level or something like that. You don't always have to do that, but if you have information that's in there and it reads those files and says, oh, I already made that before and doesn't remake it, you might end up with uh, problems or conflicts. And since this only takes six minutes to make the boot image with that MKA boot image, just like we talked about in the last video, um, this really is work, worth it just to run make clean. <clears throat> so this, uh, this build is going to be successful because I've already done this before. Um, so I know that it's going to work. However, uh, something, a couple of things to think about is when you download new governors, be really careful about where you get them. It's not saying that people are writing bad governors, not by any means. What I want you to be careful of is what is the kernel version that that governor was written for? Notice that we're building for a 3.4.103, um, version of Linux kernel. And for instance, if we go and get a Lionheart uh, CPU frequency C file from, um, you know, from a kernel that was like a, a 3.10, um, we, uh, we may run into problems where they made some changes and had to change some of the code. And then now it's going to fail during the build because it's looking for something that doesn't exist or it's writes with a symbol that's not readable by the kernel. So you want to get one that's as close to, if not exactly the same kernel version um, as, as you started with, or you're probably going to have to do a little bit of tweaking and editing, which um, in several cases I've had to do. So just something to be aware of. Also um, in that C file for the governor, it listed a whole bunch of um, include files. So it was going to include all the files listed in that include file portion. And so if you are including those files, you should make sure those files actually exist or else when it goes to include them, it will fail because it can't find them. So uh, just sort of a dependency check that you need to do um, as you uh, as you work on things like this in a kernel. We've probably got another like two or three minutes to go here. <clears throat> but yeah, um, if you look in the make file for our kernel, it's 3.4.105. Um, nicknamed the saber tooth squirrel. Uh, pretty funny how they named some of these. But uh, just, just be aware that if you're grabbing something from a different kernel version, you may have to tweak some of the code in the governor uh, to make it work. So if you're not familiar with how to tweak in C or C++, you might be better off just looking for a different file if that one didn't work. Um, it's going through, it's building uh, file systems and uh, security. If my timer is about right, we have about two and a half minutes left to go um, before this is done. So hopefully, as we went through this, you you got a good understanding of the main things that you need to change when you're adding a kernel uh, governor. Um, we need to go to the uh, drivers for the CPU frequency, add the option for what we want. We need to add the, the build instructions in the make file, and we need to add the files that are actually being made. So three parts that go into, into that. Now, if we look in the out folder and we look under kernel objects and we go to um, drivers and CPU uh, frequency, we can see the objects that we asked it to build are being built. And here we see the Lionheart object has been built. So we know that it's not gonna error out on the Lionheart object because that's already been built and already done. So that's great. We'll go ahead and let it finish here just so we can see the proof to concept 
that it did actually build completely. But, uh, but do be aware that at any point, you can just go look into the out folder and see what's been built already to see if the portion you are working on has completed successfully. Now, just because it built successfully doesn't necessarily mean that it actually worked. So um, it just means that there was no conflict in the code when it was building it. And so it went ahead and, and built that. That's yeah, about done here, or should be. And here we go, made boot image. So there we go, we've got our boot image made successfully in a little under six minutes. And we see uh, in our out folder, the boot image file. Great.